Now when we know about vectors, let's move towards addition of vectors topic. Addition of vectors means you have to add two vectors. But it is not like you add in mathematics. If I ask you to add 2 and 3, you will give me the answer as 5 because 2 and 3 both have only magnitude. They are both only scalars. If I ask you to add A and B, you will give me the answer as A plus B because nowhere there was upward arrow sign, arrow head sign which showed vectors. Till the point these things are scalars, directly addition is giving me the answer. But what about vectors? Because vectors not only have magnitude associated, but they also have the direction associated. So if I say I am applying certain, uh, say if I have some velocity and if I say I have another velocity and I need to add them and direction is also taking a lot of role into picture, what to do? You see that this is very vague, this will not give me any answer. But it is not the case. So how to do it? That I am going to tell you in this topic of addition of vectors. So specifically addition of vectors can be done by two rules. One is your triangle law of vector addition. I am just writing it for short. Triangle law of vector addition. The other would be the parallelogram law of vector addition. So I have written parallelogram and triangle in short because I am just explaining you the basic concept. Now triangle law of vector addition, parallelogram law of vector addition means these are the two laws out of which any of the law you can use and you can get the answer for the addition. So let's move for triangle law of vector addition first. As you can see this is a triangle with ABC. Now, ABC is only a triangle till now for you. But if I introduce some vectors in between, what will happen? And will direction also play a role? So please keep it in your mind that yes, direction will play a role because it is the concept of vectors. So ABC is there. Now how to deal with such thing? If I say I have to add AB vector and BC vector. So AB vector is given to you as direction like this, BC vector is given to you as like this. So as you can see AB is there, the head and the tail is there. So the arrow head of B coincides with the arrow head of here. I mean AB and BC if I have to say it in very clear manner, they are nothing but such that AB is there, the final point and here it is the initial point, right? So now how to do it? So this is known as the order. I repeat it again. See, if I have a triangle and the arrow heads are like this. So I say that this vector number A and this vector B and this is C. So A and B since are moving in anti-clockwise direction, that is taken as the same order, right? So A and B are in the same order. Now if I make C also like this, I mean downwards then A, B, C all are in the same order. But if I make C not like this, but A vector here, B vector here, and I make C like this, then C is of the opposite order, right? And in triangle law of vector addition, we do not have to take this case, but we have to take this case of opposite order of the resultant vector. What is the terminology of the final vector? that is resultant vector. So AB vector plus BC vector will give me finally a vector which is called as a resultant vector and what will it be like? It will be AC vector. It will not be following the same order. It will not be CA vector but it will be AC vector. So this is like triangle law of vector addition. And now not only when you start from AB, if I want you to tell me what is the result of BC vector plus CA vector. See, BC vector means this side, CA means the same order as BC. So the arrowhead will change for CA, this will become like this, BC plus CA. 
so these two are taken in the same order the resultant will be in the opposite order so it will not be following a cyclic path it will not be ab but it will be b a right now again if i have to practice and tell you what is ca vector plus ab vector now tell me so ca vector is going like this downwards ab vector is following a cycle it is being anti clockwise but you do not have to write the resultant as bc because otherwise it will be a loop we have to avoid a loop so it will be cb vector so some of the students find this very confusing but follow my instructions do not make it a loop right do not make it a circular loop just have the resultant in the opposite order and one more trick is there but that trick should be only used for cross check purpose that is not written in any book that a is here b and b is common c is here so ac vector is the answer please do not take this trick as mandatory you have to first follow the triangle or parallelogram check your answer with this now c and c is common so b and a is b a vector a and a is common so c and b is c b vector so this is the triangle of vector addition simply that you have two vectors and you have to add them so addition is directly not possible because there is not only magnitude but also direction so addition of these vectors can be done simply by taking the two vectors in the result uh, sorry in the same order whichever you have to add and the resultant will come in the opposite order right what about the second law the second law is specifically known as the parallelogram law of vector addition now that means that if you have to compute the addition of vectors and you do not want to use triangle law you can use the parallelogram law also so in parallelogram law what we are going to do that depends upon whether you know what is a parallelogram or not so let's see what is a parallelogram a parallelogram is nothing but a quadrilateral having pair of parallel sides so these two are parallel to each other and this and this is parallel to each other so all your rectangles square these are also a type of parallelogram only so opposite sides must be parallel to each other and there is a property of parallelogram that opposite sides are equal also so that makes sense now let's move here so this is the parallelogram law of vector addition do not get panicked as you can see this is the diagonal ac is the diagonal of the given parallelogram now when ac is the diagonal of this given parallelogram i can say that a b c d which are the four corner points of the vertices of the parallelogram have ab as pq sorry ab as p vector bc as q vector cd as p vector and your da is q vector now i have not assigned the proper arrows so i can say da as ad till this point of time now the other thing why is q vector here also q vector here also because the opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal as well as parallel now see this has a diagonal below is what below is one triangle above is another triangle so this parallelogram in short is composed of two triangles and the diagonal is the separating line diagonal ac is the separating line so if i say i can take into consideration at this particular point of time only the below triangle which is what a b c now this is your p vector this is your q vector right so p vector q vector if the direction is such that this is a b this is b c so what is p vector plus q vector p vector plus q vector is ab vector plus bc vector now don't you see that this parallelogram is basically triangles only having triangles only so the parallelogram law of vector addition can be understood with the help of these triangles only now these triangles have b and b in common so it becomes ac vector as the resultant now what is ac the direction should be here see it is not following a loop this is 
p vector plus q vector so the resultant will be p vector plus q vector so ac is your p vector plus q vector now some of you might definitely have a doubt that why i have taken this triangle only can i not take adc yes you can take adc also and then also the answer will be the same p vector plus q vector you can try it on your own so what is parallelogram law of vector addition if you take or if you consider the given vectors as the sides of a parallelogram then the resultant will be obtained by the diagonal of the parallelogram the sides of the parallelogram can be taken in one particular order while the resultant will come out to be in the opposite order now one more important thing that these laws are optional i mean you can use any one of this it is not that you have to compulsorily use triangle law it is not that you have to use particularly parallelogram law whatever suits you you can use it the basic should remain clear in your mind